Very good morning. Ay, 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 ay. Wednesday morning, eh? So, what are we going to talk about? Well, I did say to you all that I would not be wearing the buttoned up shirt. And that is now waiting to go into a frame. So, there's no football at all. However, there is lots of talk and speculation. Now this talk and speculation is about some of our superstar players. Uh, they are wanted by Arsenal, Manchester United and other teams. Do I fear that? No, not at all. You see, the thing is, right, we know for a fact there are players uh, like Sir Hayden, Fraser, and Matt Ritchie, and others. And these players came from an era where basically we had just came out of the championship and now we are well established so here's what I want to talk about I was watching through black and white eyes last night and there was a lot of talk about players wages how much they're on etc so on explore that now In olden days, we used to have a situation where we had a cap on our players. The cap was in the region of 100,000 plus. And very few of our players actually made that cut now because of that Newcastle United as a football team weren't able to attract genuine superstar players because of the wage cap now when I talk about the wage cap I want to look at our wage cap against other teams. Other teams who pay up to three times more. And that's unfair. I hope you agree. Some of those players are smashing in goals left, right and centre. But so are Newcastle United. We scored a hundred plus in the season that's just gone. That's an incredible achievement. The only downside was we let in a lot of goals. And that hampered Newcastle United. One thing which also hampered Newcastle United was some of our players only played so much of the season. Why? Why was that? Well, one of the things that caused that was we're playing, or we were playing, three times a week. Which is bloody hard to do. And the reason why it's bloody hard to do is because the constrictions of 25 man squad and this is down to rules and regulations and 
One of the things is this, that in our football season, yeah, we've got two windows. We've got summer window where the big players come in and then we have the winter window where you hope to get players through the door. It doesn't always work that way. And there's two sets of handcuffs. And those handcuffs hit Newcastle United. And they hit them hard. So we weren't able to, in the winter transfer window, acquire new players. We couldn't get rid of players who would be in the squad but they didn't run out onto the pitch. Matt Ritchie and others. There was there was many of them. Now All the football's finished, so it's time to reevaluate. And the one thing I would like to see is an increase in the cap. What I mean by that is bringing in players and their wages. You want to attract, pardon me, you want to attract goal machines, well, you got to pay the big money. And this has always been Newcastle's problem. You see, how can you attract players when your competitor is offering twice? What you're willing to pay. It's a hard nut to crack. Now, one of the things is this, right? In the old days, under the previous owner, he would try and get players in on the cheapest amount of money possible. Now we have better owners and those owners now need to look at the salaries and they need to look at it to increase it so it's more in line with our competitors because one thing is this at St James's Park, we've got 52,300 who that's maximum capacity. But we all know the feasibility study has been done. But we're still waiting to hear what's actually going on. Who is going to be given the contract to build up the Gallagates and build up the East Stand. Now I liked what I saw on YouTube that uh, little video where they showed you different images of St James's Park where it's being rebuilt before your eyes. And now part of that rebuild will be more private boxes in between the stands. And that's going to be positive. Because those can get up to 10 customers, paying customers, in. And we're also looking at new revenue from new sponsors. Mind I made that 
who went to um, speak to new potential sponsors recently. And it's important because new sponsors who are coming in, well, that's new money walking through the door. Maybe it's for what training ground or training kit. And this money is going to be important going forward. But one thing I do want to see come the new season is not letting players slip away to the likes of Manchester United, Manchester City, to Arsenal. I, I'm not frightened of the fact that um, Alexander Isak has been penciled in. Um, Anthony Gordon has been penciled in. And Bruno has been penciled in as well. Because we got to look at the bigger picture and that is sometimes players heads can be spun same way it can be spun with what happened with Dan Ashworth who thought the grass was greener down in Manchester but it isn't always greener You see, the thing is this, right? Eddie Howe and his, his team, they want the best. And we're going to get the best. With all of the injuries we had in our last season, We also had a slip in mentality on the pitch. As I said in, a, in my videos, when there were 11 games to go, we let it slip. So a lesson learned by Amanda, Mia Dad and Jamie Rubin, as well as Darren Neils, our CEO, and His Excellency Yasser Al Rumian. They'll have all learned lessons. And moving forward, because we have the championships coming up where Anthony Gordon will be, fingers crossed, playing and showing his magic on the international stage along with others the hope is for me personally we have more players playing for England that's the hope as we've got another two years for our players to get into the England squad so that when the World Cup comes round we have players in the team in the spine of England that would be absolutely epic for the brand of Newcastle United and one thing is this where everybody's fearing the likes of those players mentioned before being snapped up by other teams. My hope is this. When the players agents turn around and say, oh well, this team's going to pay you this much. They turn around and go, thank you for the offer. But I'm happy where I am. 
I'm happy to become a legend at St. James's Park. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Hmm? You see, the thing is, right, I believe this, that the capacity at St. James's Park I believe the capacity is going to increase to a, a good size. I hope also along with the capacity at St James's Park that they get rid of the ballot system so it's fair for everybody. That's what I hope. And that's all it is. Hope. Nothing more. And one thing I would like to see is the talent scouts. Those who go out to watch other players. They pick the best who will fit in with the plans. I'm going to make a bit of a bold statement. A vision of Wembley, of lifting a trophy. I think it is possible. I'll see what the bookies say about it. Because I do think it's possible that Newcastle will go back down to Wembley and this time we're going to bring home the trophy. Think about that. It's been a long, long time since our last trophy. And that's what I want to see. I also want to see this time round this next season, I want to see where Newcastle don't go for fourth. I want to see us go higher. That's what I want to see. So, to all of you wonderful people out there, just think about this way. These are just my opinions, my thoughts, because there is no football, but thoughts can go a long way. Uh, and for all of you wondering what this is, it isn't cool tea. No, it sure is. So thank you for watching this far. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. And please spread the word. Because there's lots more content. A lot of the content is going to be Newcastle United but there's also going to be other content too local content I may not be in Newcastle yeah that's true but it doesn't stop my heart from loving our club so thank you and I wish you an awesome day.